All right, nerds. So today we are going to talk a bit more. There we go about ionization energy, in particular the first ionization energy, and how that re relates to reactivity of a metal. Now, we are talking about metals in particular. Remember that. So, metal, metal, not the non-metals. Okay. So, first ionize or ionization energy. What is it? It's essentially the energy required that to overcome the attractive between um, the nucleus of an atom and the electron. And, and basically, it's what's required to remove the most loosely bound electrons of a gaseous atom. Now, that means in particular the most outer electron. And once that one's gone, we're then talking about the next outer electron and so forth. Okay, so ionization energy energy measures the ease or the tendency of an electron of a gaseous atom to lose those electrons and the symbol is i n now for a quick example of that he says i1 i2 okay n is the number of electrons moves up to that point so the first ionization energy is i1 and that's because at that energy there, one electron is removed, okay? And two and three and four. So this is um, nitrogen, which has seven electrons. And there we go, up to seven. Now, the unit is joules per mole. But because it's often quite a large number, we'll deal with kilojoul kilojoules per mole or megajoules per mole. Now, kilojoules per mole, we're mostly dealing with metals megajoules per mole that's when we get into the non-metals okay so oh, that's quick so here is the ionization energy for nitrogen and as you see it gets higher and higher and higher the more energy the more electrons you're losing and each so if that's number one that's actually the furthest electron away from the nucleus and so forth as we go in and here's what that looks like when it's graphed um, let's um, get rid of all the ink. Okay, so the electrons lost on this axis and the energy on that axis, um, and we start off at 1.4, 2.9, and then sharp increase. Now, what you see is these are the L shell, so that's the second shell. These are all second shell electrons, and these two here are first shell, K shell electrons. Cool, okay. So, there are, and here's a, a diagram. So basically, the ionization energy is the energy needed for this electron to be released to fly off. So there's several factors affecting it. Um, for starters, the size of the nuclear charge, which basically is the size of the nucleus, how many protons are in there. Uh, higher the charge, harder to remove an electron. Therefore, the higher ionization energy. That's what this IE stands for. Um, the distance of the electrons from the nucleus. So the further away from the nucleus, the easier it is to remove, and a lower ionization energy. Um, and the shielding of inner electrons. So inner electrons shield from the attractive force. So this one here would be quite easy because you've got these electrons shielding it, and these electrons shielding it, and these two out here, well, this one's not shielding it, that one there, they're a bit more susceptible because of that. So the more electrons shielding it, on so in lower levels, the lower the ionization energy. Okay, so if we look at this on our diagram, the ionization energy increases as we go across this way, and it increases as we go up this way. So that makes sense. If you go to this one here, the radon, it has more electrons in the outer shell than over here in cesium, and it also has more shielding okay does have to deal with a larger nucleus that will slow it down a bit so um, this is a, a better one this is what I like more where it's plotted each individual ionization energy now you'll see that there are the other exception like down here this one is a lower ionization energy than the one beside it there okay um, so there are exceptions, and it's not an even change. Like you see, it goes up the da da da, boom, 
um, and so forth. So it's not an easing change, even change. Okay, so how does this relate to the reactivity in metals? Now remember, metals, not non-metals. So the first ionization energy is linked to the reactivity of metals. Now remember from earlier, the reactivity of a metal is its tendency to give an electron away to something else. Okay, so that's how reactive. So reactivity of metal, metal, metals, is its tendency for electron transfer, which for them means to give away electrons. So a low ionization energy equals high reactivity. Um, it's not a simple relationship though. Other factors do have an impact. Um, gold, for example, has a lower ionization energy than iron, but gold's inert while iron oxidizes. So it's not a simple relationship. There are other factors that we're not going to go into right now, but yeah. So generally, though, lower ionization energy for metals, the more reactive it is. All right. So let's have a look at reactivity in the periodic table. Um, basically, this is the general trend. Again, we're focused on this one here. This one doesn't really phase us right now. So metal reactivity, metals. Um, group one elements are the most reactive and this increases as you go further down. So we've played with with sodium, okay? We've played with sodium in the lab and it's fun, but you don't get to go anywhere near potassium and that's because it's much, much more reactive. Um, group two elements, they're the next most reactive and they also increase as you go down the group. Now you know that they're less reactive because unlike sodium, magnesium doesn't explode when we put it in water. Um, metals along the edges of the metallic zones, so that's essentially along this top row here and around where it joins up, so where it, it interacts, so where you start to get non-metals. Um, they go from moderate to low reactivity, so that's down here is the moderates and these ones your area of low reactivity and that's your leads and such. Um, beyond these there's not really much of a trend. There is a small block of inert metals um, and they tend to be this area of it. So that's your golds and your silver, platinum and so forth. Um, but beyond that there's not much of a trend. The metals tend to be all over the place and yeah, everyone's a little bit special. So there's a figure 7.1 in your textbook. Probably you want to get that down and with the same sort of labeling. All right, that's it. That's ionization energy and reactivity in the lab, in the periodic table for metals, only metals.